from OnlineChessLessons.net, and I'm going to be continuing. This is part two of my beginner opening series, and this is the French defense. So in part one, I covered uh, what to do for black against many of the, the main lines and side lines alike against uh, three knights c3. And in part two here, I'm going to be covering what to do against knight to d2. So this is called the Tarash variation, named after Siegbert Tarash. He was a real famous player uh, about 150 years ago. But many of his contributions to opening theory, especially in this line on French defense, kind of hold up today. So going ahead and, and kicking it off, just to remind everybody, the main moves for white against uh, the, the French defense here with d5, you know, knight to c3, knight to d2, and also uh, e5. So those are kind of the main ideas, and it's also a possible exchange variation taking on d5. So today we're going to look at knight d2, the Tarash variation, and I am going to recommend a, a very similar treatment of this line as I, I did in part one against knight c3, and that is knight to f6. And so, you know, the kiss method, just keeping it simple here, and uh, it's the best way to go, especially when you're first learning an opening system. So the, the reason, you know, the, the idea behind this is very similar to the, the knight c3 line in that we want to force uh, e5 by white. And, and so if bishop to d3, this is actually going to transpose into the Swiss variation, which I covered in part one, where I, I'm just going to encourage you to go ahead and take the pawn and, and simplify. And anyway, check out part one for more details on that. So let's go ahead and, and e5. And so now knight to d7. And here white's got a couple of choices. So I'm going to start by looking at the pawn center variation. And so this involves an early f4. And so in this line, black, c5, and we see, you know, white has got the big pawn wedge in the center. So white's got some space. But black also has a lot of counterplay lined up. And he's, you know, his, his whole goal is going to be to put pressure on those pawns. And white's going to have to defend them. So now with knight to f3, knight d to f3, seems like a very strange move to develop this, uh, move the knight twice in the opening so fast here. But white's idea is very simple. He wants to play the other knight to e2. And we can see it's, it's almost like a, a kind of weird symmetry in this position. Both white knights are working to defend his center, and both black knights are working to attack it. So this is kind of what the French is all about. So moving forward, black decides to take immediately and bishop to e7. So just taking the pawn, and, and now a3, and we can see black is just playing normal developing moves. These are very flexible. He's not moving the queen twice or any other pieces, just developing, waiting to see what plan white's going to adopt here before trying anything committal like breaking the center with f6. So now after knight to g3, white does have other options here. One is g3, with the idea of bringing the bishop to h3 to put pressure on e6, and against this, I, I think I'd recommend uh, a simple queen to c7. Might look a little strange moving the queen twice here. But after bishop h3, you never want to play f5 because white really shouldn't take it with en passant. f5 is going to be closing down all your counterplay as black. And, and it's kind of like you're going to be begging for a draw. Meanwhile, white is going to be, can open the game whenever he wants with g4. So you don't want to play f5. You want to keep f6 and the option to break the center open. And here, I mean, you can just continue knight b6. And after this a3 move, you can see these light squares are a weak complex for white. Moves like a5 going to a4 to create a clamp. Maybe knight to a5, clamping down on these um, you know, light squares on the queen side. So anyway, um, not to get too distracted, knight g3 was played in this game. That seems to be a fairly reasonable move. And now f6. So f6 is perfectly timed. White has been kind of messing around with these knights. A lot, a lot of knight moves going on here. And uh, I'm not talking about Kenny Rogers' knight moves. Okay, so, so f6 and now uh, bishop d3. So white's wasted a lot of time in the opening or, or regrouping the knights. Black wants to open the position as soon as possible. So now with takes and pawn takes, now you got to be careful as black because there are some sacrifices here that are none too pretty. Some Greek sacrifice type stuff on, on h7 followed by like a knight g5 and queen to h5. But that's beyond the scope of this investigation. So we're looking at, um, a after trading pawns in the center, now knight takes e5. 
And this is this may seem like a little bit crazy. And it kind of is. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, uh, also possible there's you know some similar sacrifices in this type of position with rook takes f3. And I don't know, let's say queen takes d4. Got to pick up two pawns for that exchange. And, and white's, white's got an open position, but black's position is so solid, it's very tough to find something to attack. So these kind of sacrifices are especially, you know, you really want to keep an eye out in this, um, this, this pawn center variation involving the early f4. So in this game, black sacked a piece. Now knight takes e5. So he sacks a piece for two pawns. But because white has expended so much time in the opening, black is able to do this because black hasn't wasted any time. He's been developing his pieces very fast. So white didn't really react too well. I'm just going to finish the rest of the game quickly. Um... You know, a couple of tactics. The rook c8, very nice. You know, cut that king off. And now a check and rook to f4, an excellent move. Just setting up a bunch of mate threats here. If bishop takes, you can forget about it. Mate's threatened on e3, d2, and potentially e4, you know, if, if the knight moved. Um, so rook f4, knight f3 was tried to, to defend the mate on d4, and now bishop to e8. And here, white resigned. Because he couldn't, there's there's no way to defend against just everything that he's threatened with here. I think bishop to e3 gets met quite spectacularly with rook to d4. Yikes. Opening up the bishop, hitting the queen. Wow. And, and also, you know, bishop g6 is threatened here. So white just threw in the towel. So that does it for uh, part one of this, you know, the, the pawn center variation in the Tarash. So now I'm going to back it up, and we're going to check out uh, another line real quick. So this is actually called the closed variation, and it's going to start off similar. So, you know, knight d2, so this is the tarash. Now knight f6, same stuff, you know, same style. And now bishop d3, so a little bit more active, you know, a, a little bit less committal than playing f4 immediately. And in this line, c5, just the same type of stuff. You know, black is just introducing pressure against white center. I mean, that is that is the French defense. You know, give white the center. Okay, a little bit of space here. Black is going to be putting nonstop pressure, and you got to be quick about it before white can consolidate that space advantage. So now knight to e2, and this is the close variation. So knight to e2 to answer queen b6 with knight to f3. And so... You know, we can see, I mean, some goofy knight maneuvers here a little bit, but it makes sense. We got the two white knights supporting the center against all of blacks, you know, oncoming pressure again. And the difference is, now takes, in this game, I should point out, this is Kosro Harandi with the white pieces playing against Wolfgang Ullman, a renowned specialist in the, the 70s and 80s in the French defense. I mean, this guy... You know, practically wrote the book on, on a lot of the theory that still is, uh, you know, topical today. So, Omen, Wolfgang Omen, the French specialist, he prefers to take the pawn immediately in this closed variation on d4 and goes ahead with the immediate f6. So, normally, I'm not recommending to play f6 before you castle in the French if you're not, you know, too experienced with it. Because things can get a little hairy, it can get a little, a little dicey, a little out of control. And, um, you know, normally it's better to, you know, let's keep it cool if you're just getting acquainted with the system and uh, avoid the really sharp stuff. But F6 here seems to, it, it pretty much forces uh, pawn takes. There are some crazy lines here if white plays like knight F4 and black will come out on top. I, I don't want to cover this too much. It's a little bit, um, you know, too messy. But black comes out on top in those lines. So F6... You know, almost always white is going to take the pawn here. And so this is definitely the main line. And so now this is a, a kind of different side of the French defense that I don't think we've really covered in this beginner opening series where black has played f6 early and, he, you know, the, the position is very open and very dynamic here. So b3 is the plan adopted in this game by Mr. Harandi with the white pieces. It's also possible... Maybe bishop to f4. And, uh, you know, you always got to be careful. I just want to point out, you don't want to be a sucker and fall for this, uh, 
this tactic, trying to grab a pawn, and the discovered check, you just drop your queen. So always something to keep in mind. It's a lot of similar tactics like that in the French. Uh, bishop f4 is a move. Uh, I, I think knight f4 as well, maybe just castles. You know, nothing too crazy here. So in this game, it, you know, as black, I mean, whatever lines you come up against, it's all about the common sense. Just finish your development. As we're going to see in this game, uh, Wolfgang Omen with the black side, he does an excellent job. Just straightforward development. He doesn't move any pieces twice in the opening. And look at that. I mean, perfect coordination and centralization. And now he's ready to jam. So he starts uh, He starts getting a little fresh with bishop f4, very, very attentive move, trying to kick that, uh, that rook off the active c file. And if white wants to, you know, try to keep, you know, maybe double the rooks or something, if black gets this light squared bishop, it's really going to help his position out because that light squared bishop, nine times out of ten in the French, is going to be white's one of his best pieces. So that's something to keep in mind. You know, if you can ever go after this bishop, go for it. So instead, black, uh, you know, is, is getting a little pressure here. So he, he pushes forward now with knight to b4 and forcing the bishop back because also you can see this bishop is ready to to just jam on this b5 to uh, f1 diagonal. So now white is all discoordinated, and I'll just keep going a couple moves. This is also very instructive. This maneuver with the bishop, it, it's uh, you see it in a lot of kind of more closed games, but, but especially in this variation, the bishop is trying to reroute. It, it was also possible, I should point out, bishop to b5, that diagonal I was talking about. But instead, you know, now the bishop can help on the defense, maybe defending on sacrifices against the g6 pawn, or the bishop can even activate on this diagonal, or even on the h5 diagonal, where it's going to be you know, exerting a lot more influence than on d7. So that's a very instructive maneuver. And now we see uh, you know, Wolfgang, uh, Mr. Ullman here, he, he plays you know, really nice going into this. So he decides to give up the bishop to create a target on e5. And although white's got these nice bishops just pointing at black's king, there's nothing he can do with them because he's wasted a lot of time with this rook. So queen g4, now g6, just shoring up the defense. And after rook f7, black is doing very well. The pawn on e5 is extremely weak, plus there is a mountain of pressure aimed at white's king at f2. So in this position, Ullman trades queens, and after a4, uh, which turned out to be a blunder, but it's a pretty tough end game for white because black has no weaknesses, and he's just going to try to win this e5 pawn, and if nothing else, he's got a passed d5 pawn himself. So here, in a tough position, white blundered with a4, and now, you know, he could have tried maybe this, but I, but I think the knight is just so strong here. So he tried to play actively with bishop d4, and uh, I'm going to stop this game here. Oh, you can check out the game in the article with the description. I, I've included a PGN of the rest of the game. But, you know, I think it's pretty clear here that Black has a very close to winning advantage for the extra pawn. And, and the fact he's got no weaknesses because the French defense, a lot of the times the, the resulting pawn structure in the end game is going to be very similar to this. Black has just got a slightly less space, but in the end game, that results, you know, it's easier to defend, less weaknesses. So this concludes part two of my uh, French Defense Beginner Opening Series. And stay tuned for part three that's going to be covering a couple of miscellaneous lines like the exchange variation and uh, maybe the King's Indian attack you don't see quite as often. So this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and thanks for tuning in.